Okay. Uh, thanks for taking my call, and uh, thanks for thanks for um, joining us, Eminence. Um, my question, uh, mostly, you know, regards to um, you know this year, I think the uh, state has encroached upon our religious liberties and our civil liberties, and um, I was just wondering um, if there's uh, anything uh, that the Conference of Catholic Bishops um, is putting together to um, uh, kind of help um, Catholics in dealing with um, potential civil disobedience and um, so we can ensure that we um, fight to protect our religious liberties that we do have. Cardinal, religious liberty, especially at the USCCB, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. I'm really not competent to speak about the Conference of Bishops because I, being a, serving in Rome, I don't belong to the Conference of Bishops, and so I'm not really party to. Okay. Uh, I, but I, I did observe, for instance, that in the Archdiocese of, of um, St. Saint Paul in Minneapolis, Paul. that when the, the governor tried to restrict the opening of the churches, uh, that Archbishop Hebda said simply, no, we, it, we have the right it's our not only the right but the duty to to worship God in these times, and our churches will open. And at that, the governor also uh, uh, changed his his uh, decree in that regard. But I think one of the things that st strikes me in this whole crisis is that the church has to uh, underline, fight for the primacy of of worship of God in prayer as the primary way to deal with such a situation. And I think that that requires at times we have to insist with the state that uh, uh, that that our churches be open and that also that the sacraments can be administered always with this respect for the normal precautions. But to, uh, I mean, we had a situation where uh, worship and prayer was considered practically uh, unimportant. Uh, all kinds yeah. of other things, there were exemptions for them, but not, not for prayer and worship. So we, we have to be very careful and, uh, and, and we have to be ready to, to fight to defend uh, the, the, the right to worship, but, but also the right to practice our faith. Mm -hmm. and, I think it's, uh, just to add to that, Sai, I mm -hmm. of course agree with everything as Eminent said, uh, and in deference to your caller, there will perhaps come a time uh, where uh, what he described as civil obedience, civil disobedience uh, may happen. Uh, the church has provision for these things. And again, I'm thinking of my, my uh, training as a moral theologian and thinking about uh, the, the, the relationship between the, the church and the civil authority. And in the catechism, these kinds of questions are addressed so that, the, that, we, that we know when uh, the, a certain line has been crossed. So it, it can be that that, that may happen in the meantime, I think it's very important that we pray for the shepherds, that they have the courage, uh, as Archbishop Hebda did, uh, uh, to represent the, the, the faith well in the public square. Yes. And other, other bishops will rise up in that way. They will take encouragement from what the archbishop did. Yeah. And that's something, that as, as the faithful, we can do through our prayer, sacrifice, and perhaps even writing respectful letters, respectful communication to the bishops to stand strong. Uh, and to and to fill exactly what his eminence said, the responsibility that we have first and foremost to worship God.